Hello. Welcome to this webinar today, where we're going to be looking at retail price setting. I'm Peter Towers, Managing Director of ESS Biz Tools. Welcome. Retailers need assistance because retail, along with most other industries, is changing. Accountants and bookkeepers cannot solve all the problems of a retailer, but there's some significant areas that you can assist in, and I'm going to overview some of those to you in this presentation. In large retail businesses, there are employed accountants and financial people who can assist in the understanding of the difference between a markup and a gross profit percentage and make sure that when prices are being set that it's the markup percentage that's being used and not the gross profit percentage figure. This can involve some team training to make sure people understand and obviously within your accounting or bookkeeping firm you should make sure that your team have gone through this process and understand the difference between the markup and the gross profit percentage. One of the big issues, though, is addressing the mix of products because they've all got different volumes and different markups that apply to them. So configuring the products that you need to suggest to your client that they sell is the challenge if they're going to achieve their predetermined profit target for the year. Now, it's important that you don't assume that your client understands all this. If they're a long-term retailer, they obviously will. But there's a lot of people going into retail businesses as small business operators that have really not had a retail background. And some of them may have had senior positions. I had a particular client that was in a very senior position in a business, and he mixed up the utilisation of markups and gross profit percentages. In fact, he used the gross profit percentages, which he knew what they should have been, as the, the figure that was utilised as the marker. Now, you can appreciate, instead of marking up something by 50%, he only marked it up by 33 and a third percent. He never got anywhere near the desired selling price. He was smart enough as an operator to know something had gone wrong because his bank statement was going down. And he rang me and we had a look at it. And uh, he told me that in his previous life, where he'd been a managing director of a very large corporation, he had an accountant that did all these calculations and presented the figures to me. So we've developed a markup gross profit chart really out of that whole interaction with that client to hopefully make it easier for people to understand that if you are targeting a 50% markup, that equates to 33 and a third percent on sales. Because when you think about it, when accountants produce a profit and loss account, we tend to then concentrate on the sales figure. So we've got a gross profit and we've got a sales figure. We put the gross profit divided by sales, multiplied by 100 over one. And that's a key figure that we as accountants use. But from the retailer's point of view, they first of all start with what's the markup they're going to apply. And that's why this chart is so important. So please use it with your clients. But the, the real problems then get back to the, the composition of their stock. And stock changes. So we've got star products, but it could be a star this year and a problem stock item next year. And I'll explain that in a moment. But stars are normally high volume and high markups. They're a joy to have. But unfortunately, it, it is a very unique retail business that only needs to sell star products. Normally, they need other products because in star products, there's normally a lot of competition. Other people have got the same or similar products. The next product category, in fact, it might be the highest volume product category in a lot of retail business, is what the terminology is referred to as cash cows. 
businesses need them, but they're not big profit earners. So they're high volume and low markups. In a retail food type business, it tends to be newspapers, milk, bread, those sort of basic staple products that a lot of businesses sell. And there's nearly an agreed price that's going to apply to them. So it's very hard to mark them up so they become stars, unless they're a very unique brand or got some of that very key attributes that apply to them. The low volumes are uh, problem minds. that They could have been a star last year, but fashions have changed or a new product's been released by a competitor. And they still could have a, a high volume, depending on how much of it was cleared last year. But in lots of cases, it will be low volume. But the markup will have dropped. It might not be quite the lowest, but it will be midway between high and, and low, hopefully, for your client's position, financial position. And then we've got disasters. Now, these are low volume, low markups. There's always a debate in a business, who bought this rubbish? Why have we still got it? You need to be careful about automatic reorder systems on computer packages because they are set them when the, the uh, quantity gets to a certain number to automatically reorder. So I've seen the situation where the retail staff in a store had worked very hard over a couple of years to clear a particular stock line and then had a party to say, that's good, we got rid of those, we're never going to have them again. And a couple of weeks later, a new consignment of stock turned up. How did that happen? They wanted to know. Well, it was the automatic reorder system. Someone forgot to switch it off. So make sure if you're talking to your clients, you mention that to them because it's a real trap. Because all that elation that they got rid of that horrible stock that they couldn't sell, uh, was evaporated quite quick. So that's the, the mixture of uh, businesses. One of the real um, key areas in understanding stock lines is obviously the high volume, high margin stars are very good products, but we've also got high volume, but low margins cash cows. From talking to numerous retailers over the years, the trick seems to be to place your cash cow products around the store and then have in close proximity to them star items. Because a lot of people turn up that their only intention is to buy a cash cow product. They want to buy some bread or some milk or some the newspaper. And if they have to go around the store to find those products, and when they do so, they, they go past a star product. Now, that might be nicely, freshly cut ham off the bone that they can see and they can smell. They can see it's great quality. Gee, that'd go nice for breakfast or for lunch. And then they'll need some bread. And if you've got some higher, higher quality bread, which might form a, a star category, they might buy that to go. So they've got nice, fresh bread for the ham to be placed on, then perhaps some tomatoes. If they're a star product, you could have them all get your client to put them in little sections to create this impulse buying. And that might help the business. Then we got the problem minds. Well, you need to get rid of them. So maybe they can go alongside some of the star products, but they need to get rid of them. They're tying up shelf space. They're tying up cash flow. And the disasters, well, they need to get rid of them as quick as possible. I've had clients that have sold them to other dealers just to clear them out of the business. So you need to be looking at that. So that's where we've got the, the stars, the cash cows, the problem lines and the disasters. That basically breaks up the stock in your client's business. The big question is, uh, how does all this mix together then to generate uh, the targeted profit? So they... Um, they need to have an understanding of what category the various products are, product products are, and how they can then be mixed together. So we're now going to have a look at our um, 
retail price calculator, which will give you an idea of how um, we approach this setting of uh, pricing for um, for uh, businesses. So we're going to go to the um, budgets and uh, cash flow forecasts, which uh, will give you a good indicator. Hello, I'm Peter Towers, Managing Director of ESS BizTools and ESS BASIP. Welcome to this uh, webinar on setting retail prices calculator for you to be able to use with your clients to guide them through the process of determining their labour budget, reviewing the business's overhead costs, determining an appropriate return based on the investment in the business, and then looking at the mix of products that they are currently selling, what the markups are, to determine if they have the correct sales mix at the correct prices to achieve the profit target. So we look forward to guiding you through this process and then you will be able to utilise the spreadsheets to be able to undertake this process with your clients. So the first form you go to is just the introduction. You will badge this with your name and your client's name and the date that you have prepared the, the document. There are some instructions. which is linked as you can see and guides you through the process. We've got calculation of labour on costs and we have given you maximum flexibility to document individual variations. This will then enable the identification of a gross profit target for this business. This will determine the gross profit percentage that is needed And then you'll be able to work through the sales mix strategy that's going to be required for this business. So let's move into the calculation of the labour on costs. We've already gone through and partially completed this form. So we've inserted a manager and assistant manager in classification A1. And we've put in details of annual leave, holiday pay loading, etc. So the system can do the calculations. The long service leave, all you have to do is enter the abbreviated state and click on into this column and the number of days that are being earned on an annual basis from someone working full time will then be determined. If someone is not working full time, appropriate adjustments are made in the calculations. And there's calculations then made as to what the total on costs are if they're expressed on an annualised salary. And the budget calculator for labour is picking up all of these costs. Obviously you can vary them as you see fit. There's opportunity for you to go through and put a wide range of staff classifications, some of which will have variables maybe on annual leave or on holiday pay loading, some might not get it. And some people will be able to get a shift worker allowance. So the system has been designed to give you flexibility to insert those details. The labour budget. 
the information that's been inserted as the classification of the employee and the reference is automatically transferred. What you need to insert is the number of individuals who are performing that role and the salaries on an individual basis. So that's the gross salaries. The system then transfers the labour on cost percentage from the calculation of labour on cost and will automatically calculate it for an individual person and also will then show the total individual employment cost and then the total labour cost based on the number of people in that classification. The system also had provision for permanent part-time staff and we have done the calculations for them on a hourly payment rate. And then we've also got provision for some casual staff, again on an hourly payment basis with the casual loading built into it. So that the system is able to give us a total labour cost, which is coming up at $1,362,272. Now that is including the labour on cost that has been calculated. Because that's a cost that's accruing to the business. The budgeted overhead expenses, there's a form prepared that you will need to complete. Obviously you can add expense items if you wish. We then move into the financial analysis. The financial analysis has got um, three separate segments. The first one is what's the return on investment you insert, what you believe the value of the investment in this business is. We're showing here at $650,000. We've inserted a targeted rate of return of 25%. Therefore, the targeted net profit prior to income tax is $162,500. We then have a Section 5 is looking at the gross profit target and obviously this comprises the total labour cost including the labour on cost, the overhead budget and the profit. When all added together that is the targeted gross profit for the business. The calculation is then done to determine what is the overall average gross profit that has to be achieved to earn a gross profit of $1,831,000 and that will mean that the sales figure has to be $3,212,000 and a gross profit of 57%. If that's all achieved, the business will show a net profit of $162,000. Sounds easy, doesn't it? But in actual practice, it is very difficult. So we then move into the very interesting area, which is the sales mix. This is an ongoing problem for your clients who are operating retail businesses. It's very rare for a retailer to only be selling one product. They're normally selling a range. So we've made provision here for 32 products. Hopefully that covers what your clients will have. And we've gone through and looked at what's currently happening before this exercise was done. That's what we're doing in example one. And to explain this, I probably should be using a highlighter. So example one is going through and saying, what's the dissection of the sales mix at this stage? What products are they buying? What are the markups? What are the markup dollars? What is the resultant sales figure? So we go through, we've got product one, we could, now in here you can type the name of the product if you wish. We've just used the terminology product numbers and we have 
indicated what we believe those products are costing and then what the individual markups the business normally achieves for those particular products. And then we've got the total figures. So the total purchases were 1,238. The markup ends up at 1,588. So the total sales are 2,826. So you're then able to do this short P&L type exercise. At sales at 2,826 with purchases at 1,238, but the gross profit of 1,588,600. The overall gross profit percentage will be 56.2%. Now that's under the targeted that's figure that's been set. And if you analyse the labour on costs and the budgeted overhead expenses, they add to 1,688,000. So this business is actually showing a minus $80,000. The system then tells you that to meet the overall targeted figure of 162,500, remember from the financial analysis, that's our targeted, at this average gross profit percentage of 56.2%, you're going to have to sell a further $431,000 worth of product to achieve this, the targeted profit of 162,500. Okay, so what we'll do now is go back and say, well, okay, let's do a further example. We've called it example two. And in example two, we have then started to do some playing. So you could do this with your clients saying, well, in product one, could we increase our purchases to 330%? Because this is a high markup. Will we still get 180%? Client says, okay. That's the markup, the sales, and the system's automatically calculating what the gross profit percentage is. So overall, you're making 64%. So that's your best selling line on gross profit basis, and obviously markup. Could you sell more of it? At this stage, we've got 330,000. Product two, your client might say, no, we can only sell $200,000, and in fact, uh, we might even, we've played around with this and we've got a, the markups only 130% this time round. The next one, we've got the 200,000, but we've increased the markup a little bit to 125%. The same thing in the next product line. We've kept the, the overall purchases the same at 200,000, but we think by some in-store marketing and some other changes, we can probably get the markup up to 140%. The next one, uh, we've got the same purchase as 90 grand. In fact, we're really saying we can't do much with that. Um, management's telling you they need those products, so they're staying the same. The next one, we're buying a little bit more, five grand more. Um, we've got the same markup percentage. You might ask yourself whether they really need that product at all, but that's uh, another question. Same with the next lot. So let's look at the overall result of what we've achieved here. We've made some changes because overall the purchases have gone from 1,238 to 1,381, but the gross profits now 1,831 as compared to 1,588, and the sales figures increased from 2.8 million to 3.2. Now, we only made a couple of subtle changes there, primarily looked at the biggest selling item and said to your client if they adopted some aggressive marketing tactics, maybe digital marketing where they're really trying to zero in on people that might be interested in their products, what could result? We've now got an overall gross profit percentage of 57%. That's what we were trying to achieve, wasn't it?
and let's look at the uh, the calculation now. It's saying that we've got overhead expenses of 306,000. We're assuming there's been no changes in that area, and there shouldn't be. Uh, just one sales mixed to another. The labour and on cost hasn't changed either. In some instances, maybe there could have been some tinkering with the labour costs because of different ways of selling or marketing that might be required, but we're assuming that's remained constant. So our overheads and labours remain the same at 1668 million, but we've now got a net profit of 163,000. And in fact, the sales differentials in effect to sell $961 less of this product will achieve the profitability target of 162500 So at this stage, you're able to say to your client, if you're able to achieve what's in example two, in buying these products and getting this sales mix, you'll be able to achieve your stated net profit target of $162,000. Now I think you know what the next question is going to be from your client. Could we do better than that? It's been my experience that whenever I've done these exercises, the clients then turn around and say, well, that looks very interesting. Could we even go better? So we've used example three as the basis for you to have that conversation with your client and say, well, hang on, could we go better? So we've, we've in, slightly improved the purchases in product one, but we've improved the margin by 5% to 185. So the sales are now going to be 986, up 60 odd thousand. Product number two, we're saying we'll buy a little bit more of that and we're going to get 5% more. So we're going to do some, some negotiations with suppliers and try to probably buy a little bit cheaper. Or we're going to do some in-store promotions and try to improve these margins a bit. The next one, we've increase the purchases a little bit but we've left the margin the same. You can't just increase every margin and you need to tell your client that. The next one, everything's exactly the same. $200,000 worth of purchases, 140% markup. The next one, we're going to buy a little bit more and we're going to get 5% more in, in selling the product. The next one, we're going to buy a little bit more, we're going to move the price markup up by 5%, really tinkering at the edges. And let's look at what the result's going to be when we get there. We're going to buy a little bit more of this product, but we're going to try to get 5% more when we sell it. Now this one here was our lowest markup at 75%. We've decided to recommend to the client that they don't get that. A 75% markup is only showing a 43% gross profit percentage. This business is aiming for 57%. Our recommendation to the clients been wipe that. Don't don't run that stock in your store. This next one, we were only buying $45,000 previously. We've worked out where we can get some more product. We're going to buy $100,000, and bingo, we're going to get 10% more in the margin. We're going to end up with 120% markup. And the last one, we're going to buy a bit more and we're going to get 10% more also. And obviously all this is just an example, so you can get your client to start thinking about all this. So what's it done down the bottom here? I'll put that there so we can see the total screen. It's saying that our purchases have now gone to 1,401,000. They were 1,381. They really haven't gone up that much. But, and the markup's gone from 1.83 million to 1.965 million. So there's a substantial increase there. And turnover's now at 3,366,000 instead of 3,212,000 or at 2.82 million 
before you started having these conversations with your client. So what's it all mean? We've got sales of 3.3 million. We've got purchases of 1.401. Our gross profit is now 1965. We're going to achieve a higher gross profit than what percentage than what was being targeted. 58.39%. The target was 57. There's the financial figures. And gee, look at this. We are going to make a net profit of 297,000. Our target's only 162,000, about 130 odd thousand dollars more profit. That's really come about by just tinkering at the edges and trying to say to your client, if you really worked hard, can you get a bit more money for some of these products? Can you buy a bit more of it? And then see what the results are within your business. So in fact, our little calculation says here, we could sell $230,000 less of this product at 58.3% to achieve the $162,500 profit target. But why would you do that? Your client can now see how they can make $297,000. So next year in their targets, that should be the minimum target they're looking for, not $162,500. I hope you're going to have great fun playing with this chart and identifying to your client how if they think outside the square a bit, they can achieve great things. So this final example here is really saying, what's the client going to do? Well, we're saying, I believe the client would select strategy three. They want sales now at 3.36 million. They want to make a 58.39% gross profit percentage. And as long as they can do all of that without increasing their labor, their overhead expenses shouldn't increase unless they have some more advertising or digital marketing or something like that. But if so, you'd adjust for that. And that should earn them a profit of $297,000 as compared to their original figure of 162,000. So what's been achieved out of this chart as a budget forecast? aid for a retailer. You've helped them to work through who their staff are. These expenses are including all of their wage on costs. Too many businesses forget that and don't factor it into their selling prices. It's now been factored into the selling prices. The overhead expenses have been calculated. The labour budget's been determined and the business owner can get an idea based on the various components of their purchases, what they need to buy more of, what they need to buy less of, whether they need to go and have a conversation with suppliers to try to get a better deal, and whether some changes in their marketing and selling philosophies will enable them to sell more of a particular product, especially the one that they're going to get the high markup from. So hopefully that will help you. The other material that's contained in here, over the years I've had clients that have had difficulty in understanding the difference between the markup percentages on purchases and the gross profit percentage on sales. So we've developed a chart that you can just show them so that they understand the differences. I've had a couple of instances over the years where clients have got themselves into some difficulty by um, using the markup percentage figures and thinking that was the gross profit percentage. So they thought they were making a gross profit of 100% where they were only marketing up the goods by 100%. Hell of a difference. The other calculator we got here, I referred to this earlier, this is the long service leave calculated there, the codes for the various states and territories that you can insert and you can see that we've already done the calculation based on the leave, long service leave per annum that has been accrued based on each year of service by an employee. So to finish off, I'm just taking you back to the sales mix chart. I hope you're able to use this to assist your clients to 
better think through their retail businesses to work out wh what are their star items, what are their, their uh, stars, what are their cash cows, and I identify their problem mines. And the first instance should be to get rid of the problem mines and re then really look at the overall mix to see whether it can be engineered differently so that a different financial result can be achieved. And you'll notice from these figures that you don't have to do too much fine tuning to achieve some significant changes. Thank you very much for your support of ESS BizTools. If you have any questions on any aspect of the retail price calculator, please do not hesitate to contact us. Have a great day. Goodbye. And hopefully uh, you will be able to utilise uh, that material uh, within your work with your clients to uh, assist them on improving their retail. And don't forget retail material that we produce could also apply to wholesale businesses. If you require any further information from us at any time, please don't hesitate to contact us. Send me an email, peter at essbistools.com.au or telephone 07-4724-1118. Thank you for your participation in this webinar. Have a great day. Goodbye. And I look forward to talking to you on our next webinar presentation. Goodbye.